Welcome back to the advanced course on Tableau. By now we're getting very comfortable with working with sets. We've done a couple of tutorials on them and we've already learned even how to combine sets to achieve results like that. And today we're going to learn how to use parameters to control our sets. It's going to be quite a powerful combination when you put those two together. And we're going to start by remembering about that set that we created a while ago for growth. So here it is, the dynamic set that we created, top startups by growth, dynamic set. And as you recall, we even applied it to our tree map. So here, as we change the uh, set, the tree map changes. So how about we go and create a parameter that will allow the user to change the set. So right now, in order to change the specification of the set, we have to go into edit set and we have to uh, set uh, the value over here. But now we'll create a parameter so the user will be able to toggle it over here and adjust that set. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to right click here and select create a parameter. And we're going to call this parameter um, growth leaders. So that's how many we want to look at. And we'll give it a current value of uh, 10 and of course, it's not a float, it's an integer, so it's a whole number. Uh, display automatic, So, and we want to give it a range. So let's say the person that's uh, looking at this dashboard can say that this parameter can range from 5 all the way up to 100 and with a natural step of 1. So if we click OK, uh, now as you can see, we, we have less space because a new uh, tab has appeared here with parameters. And let's go ahead and put this parameter onto our sheet and we will uh, click show parameter control. So here the person can change the parameter, but as you can see for now it does absolutely nothing because it's not connected to anything. Let's connect it to our set. So this is the set we're connecting to, the dynamic set. And we'll click edit set. And in the top here, instead of a number, we're going to select our parameter. Here it is, growth leaders. Click apply. Okay. And as you can see right away, everything's changing. So as we change the parameter, we are able to control our visualization, the number of leaders that are being displayed. As you can see, the minimum is five, the maximum is 100, and this controls our tree map. We're not going to worry about the fact that the uh, tree map formatting is affected by the number of uh, growth leaders that we select because uh, that's not going to be our concern. Our main focus was that now we are controlling, we have a parameter that we can control uh, this set with. And now we're going to go ahead and create parameters that will control our other two sets, which we use in the scatter plot, and those are the high revenue and low expenses sets. So let's go ahead and create those parameters. Uh, parameter, this one we will call uh, revenue cutoff and uh, we'll give it a current value, it doesn't really matter. Let's uh, give it a current value of um, 10 million as it is right now. And we won't touch that for now. So range, minimum, maximum. You can get these from a field. So if you click set from field and select 2015 uh, revenue, they'll populate automatically. And then you just change this one to a zero. And also, we don't want it to be a flow because nobody's going to specify up to uh, decimal points the cutoff uh, level. So we'll just change it to an integer just for aesthetics. And we'll click OK. And also we will create a parameter this time for expenses. So we'll call it expenses cutoff. This one will be, we'll set it at 5 million and range, once again, minimum, maximum. We'll set it from a field, 2015 expenses, put this to zero, and then change this to integer. Okay, so that looks good. Now let's embed these parameters into our set. And this is actually going to be a bit different, and I'll show you why. So if I click edit set for high revenue, you'll recall that we didn't use the top tab, we actually use the condition. And in the condition, you can't select a parameter here. So what we need to do is we need to create a formula. And the formulas here are very simple. So just make sure you don't uh, type in um, if or anything like that because that'll just complicate the formula. What, what you need to put in here is uh, an expression that you would normally put inside an if. So whatever you would normally put in here, that's what you need to type in the formula. And it's like a specific uh, thing uh, how 
uh, these conditions inside sets work. So let's uh, type it in. We want to check that 2015, uh, let's type in revenue better, uh, 2015 revenue is greater than revenue cutoff. And you'll see that it errors out right away for us because I didn't put an aggregation. Let's put an aggregation here. Be uh, it doesn't uh, really matter uh, for us in this particular case for us because we're working uh, this um, set is created at the most granular level at the level of ID uh, this aggregation will be equal to the value under underlying it but uh, in other cases you will need a, an aggregation so that's why it's asking for one and you don't need an aggregation for a parameter mm -hmm. so once you click apply you've got that set modified and if we do the revenue cutoff and we show parameter control now if we move it around as you can see, our visualization adjusts. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. And finally, what we want is a parameter for our uh, expenses. So let's edit the set here. And by the way, you might want to pause this video just to practice and do it yourself and then see how I did it. Um, but otherwise, all we have to do is just type in sum um, and then expenses 2015. This time is going to have to be, of course, less than expenses cutoff. And if we click apply, click OK, and then we show parameter control. Now, if we toggle this one, as you can see, once again, we're changing our visualization on the fly, which is very, very powerful. So that's all. That's how you create parameters to control your sets. As you can see, it's a um, useful tool that you now have in your arsenal when working with Tableau. And in the next tutorial, we're going to finally take it to the next level. We're going to put all this together and create a uh, wonderful looking dashboard. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, happy analyzing.